What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Tesla Geek Show. I am Anwar Beck. And I'm Eli. And on this week's episode of the Tesla Geek Show, we have a very special guest. Uh, his name's Carson Gallo. You can find him on Twitter. And he has a very unique Tesla owner story because unlike me, who just sometimes camps in my car, he lives in it. So this week's episode of the Tesla Geek Show is brought to you by EvanX. EvanX is the Tesla community's accessory store. And if you place an order with EvanX, you can get $10 off on an order of $100 or more with the discount code Tesla Geeks. All right, all right, all right. And we're back. I know you're as excited for this as me. Let's welcome our guest, Carson Gallo. Yellow. Hey, guys. Dude, how's it going, man? It's going beautiful. Look, welcome to the Beautiful. Tesla Geek Show. But I got to ask, are you in your car right now? I am. I am. I got my head against my Tesla pillows. I got my Tesla blankie right here with me. And we're coincidentally wearing the same shirt. Don't panic. Don't panic, man. So I got to say, of every guest on our show, I think you are probably in the most comfortable setup. <laughs> of anybody that's been on here. I wish I was laying down right now instead of sitting in my little producer chair here. So envious. That's yes, amazing. I got the dream case bed here. So made specifically for the Tesla. Oh, so comfy. Definitely recommend it. It's the best choice. I actually just got their Gen 3, the newest version of the mattress. Because I like, I'd had the prototype. I convinced them like oh. when I first got my Model S in 2017 to sell me like a Gen 1 prototype. So I just went to the current one. Oh my God, it's night and day. And it was great before, but now, man, that's yeah. so comfortable. They actually offered to make me a free one because I've probably been using it more than any other person who's ever used their product. So they're going to make me like a custom one. They're going to put like special logos on it for me and everything. Oh, it, it's such a great product. Dude, so well, comfy. well deserved, Dude, man. So let's we, jump into yeah. it then. So you are so, living out of your Tesla. What Tesla are you driving? Like, tell us this whole story. Yes, so I have the Tesla Model X 2018 75D black. Uh, when I was actually looking to get a Tesla, I was planning this ahead of time. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to afford a Tesla unless I was pr pretty much living it on my limited income. So I decided I was tired of having a crappy car and a crappy place to live. So I decided to get an awesome car and an awesome place to live at the same time. Win-win pretty much. And first six months of uh, I had the car, I was doing it part time, you know, on and off. I didn't have the dream case yet. You know, I had a little mattress, you know, I was working out the bugs. And then for the next six months after that, I was actually using it as the bedroom in the garage of my house. And you know, the great thing about having an electric car in a garage is that you can have it on and you don't have to worry about carbon monoxide and <laughs> choking yourself to death. And then for the past year, I've been living out of it full time. That's amazing. I can't even. So is there like, is there a particular place you stayed? You travel all over. So what's that, what's that journey been like? Yes. Yeah, so charging stations, campsites, and in front of friend and family members' houses. The key things to the places where I stay is, you know, you got to have bathroom access. You know, you got to have privacy, security. 24 seven parking, you know, uh, right now I'm at a great place. That's got a solar canopy above it. It's a charge point station. So I got free unlimited charging. I got a shower right over here. There's a walk. I can walk directly to the beach and this ice cream parlor and food and groceries. So I'm in a great place today. That's awesome. So this Tesla adventure that you're on started well before you even got your own Tesla, right? You used to be part of the company, yeah? That is correct. For two years, from 2016 to 2018, I actually worked for Tesla as well. Awesome. What'd you do there? What brought you into that whole ecosystem? Like, tell us some more about that. Yes. Yeah, so I was a field energy specialist. So I would educate my fellow humans on Tesla's energy products. Because remember, of course, Tesla doesn't just do vehicles. They do solar batteries. They're doing the solar roof right now. So, and interestingly, I would work out of field locations. So out of Home Depots, Best Buys. So I would be all alone by myself pitching pitching to Tesla's products to people while helping them out with electronics or, you know, working on their product uh, project at the Home Depot. 
And I did this for two years up until, unfortunately, I was late, part of the June 2018 layoffs. I remember that. That was a hard time yeah. for a lot of people. That's where they took out like 10%, right? Uh, no, I think it was not, yeah, 9 or 19%. 19% actually, I think. Okay. Yeah, that was a tough one. That was a 20 And then technically, I was affected the following year by the May 2019 layoffs where I was offered a job to come back. But before I even started, another layoff. The recruiter's <sighs> position was eliminated and my position was eliminated. That's pretty rough with a guy who was trying to hire you got laid off. <laughs> yeah. Did we lose you there for a second? Oh, hey, you're breaking up. Oh, hey, you're breaking up. I'm going to try switching directly. Okay, go ahead. We'll just edit this out. Yeah, I'm seeing a little bit of lag as well, but yeah. it wasn't that bad. I'm on a 5G hotspot, so okay. it should be good. Am I better now? Seems good. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, go and so, what was I saying? Let me, let me jump in. Um, maybe you can start from here, Eli, in three, two, one. So, on this call, we've got basically a pretty wide spectrum. We've got Carson on one end who lives out of his Tesla, so you're living the 24-7 vehicle Tesla life. Uh, you've got Eli in the middle who's known for these adventures, my Tesla adventures he goes on. So he's very comfortable, but he's not quite living out of his Tesla. But I think maybe, Carson, he's getting closer to your side every day. And then, to be honest, when we're talking about Dreamcase, I have never slept on the back of my Tesla. I've heard of Dreamcase. I've never actually experienced it. So there's a wide spectrum on this call. You've got kind of a novice guy who has no clue about sleeping in his Tesla to a guy who is, so this is kind of an interesting call for me. Like maybe you guys can kind of educate me on like, Carson, number one, before we even dive into that, I'm interested in your background. Even before Tesla, have you always been into sustainability, into technology? Like what is like, give us like, where are you from originally? Like how did you get into the space to begin with? Yes. So, uh, what really personally motivates me, you know, is kind of a sad story. Uh, I lost one of my best friends due to a car accident due to human error. So what really got me interested in Tesla was, you know, Tesla's autopilot software. So taking human error out of the equation can save thousands of lives and including, you know, future friends of mine. Uh, so I wouldn't have to lose any future friends ever again. You know, that technology is really hits hits my heart you know they could save a so, potentially sorry to hear that man lives. but so so you basically got into tesla or into the space because of like i mean you had a deep burning passion it's something that hit close to home yes like right in the middle of your heart basically this is somebody that you loved and cared deeply about that it kind of sounds like it was a senseless accident or human yeah. error basically that could have been avoided. i actually named my tesla after his initials in his honor that's awesome man and that what got me into the energy side was I was actually part of the Army National Guard. And I'm not sure if you heard of uh, Hurricane Sandy, but uh, that really hit New York State and the East Coast really hard. So oh, yeah. that's what uh, motivated me to join the Guard and help, uh, you know, respond to natural disasters, you know, or, you know, uh, man-made disasters or anything of that nature. So, you know, us turning to renewable energy will help, you know, prevent those future natural disasters as well. So going on to the energy side of Tesla, that also really motivated me, motivated me as well. What surprised you the most working at Tesla? Because Eli and I have a lot of friends that work at Tesla. One of the things that I, it's almost like a year at Tesla equals five years anywhere else. So if you've worked at Tesla for five years or your two years is actually equivalent of working 10 years anywhere else. Is this a pretty, uh, like, is it pretty intense working there? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was the energy side. Uh, at a time where Tesla was really uh, at concentrating on the Tesla Model 3. So, you know, the energy side for a time was kind of like Tesla's forgotten child or, you know, least favorite child a little bit because everything had to go into the Model 3. Otherwise, the company would die, essentially. So that's what was really going on at the last six months of 2018. You know, the, um, they're really prioritizing uh, Model 3, but, you know, was really surprised a lot of people were asking about the solar roof, the solar roof, you know, they announced the solar roof, 
you know, at a time uh, like really well before it was ready. So that what really surprised me. And, you know, it kind of hurt the solar side at that time before, you know, before the solar was even ready, you know, they should have probably waited a little bit longer to announce the, uh, the solar roof. But uh, yeah, there were a lot of things that surprised me. I actually went through uh, the solar city Tesla transition as well. So for a while I was part of the solar city brand and then they transferred us over to the Tesla brand. And that was a great day and a great feeling. We all got together. We had a party. We're showing off all our Tesla swag. I already had like 10 Tesla shirts already ready to go. And uh, that was a great day when we transferred over to the Tesla brand. That's awesome. Actually, uh, three years ago, I got to meet the co-founders of Solar City, Elon's cousins. Ah, the Rives. They're, yeah, amazing people, dude. I've got a, I've yeah. got a picture with them and like some of the co-founders of Tesla at one. I think it was a semi event. So, I, I heard directly from them about the beginnings of Solar City and all that. So it's quite an inspirational story. But you bring up an interesting point. This is something I've been thinking about recently. It kind of seems like Tesla for three or four years, and Elon and you guys are listeners. You guys know Elon has been on record saying in five, ten years, the energy side of the business is going to dwarf automotive. It's going to be kind of an energy company. But it kind of seems like they keep having these false starts almost, right? Like three years ago, they're supposed to make a big push, and then it didn't really happen. And then two years ago, and then recently, just a few months ago, Elon kind of announced. Now we're for real with the solar uh, tiles. What are they calling yep. that? Is it solar? Solar roof tiles. Yep. Solar roof tiles and then power wall and all that. Like, it's almost like, I think in, even Elon, the, the, the story broke because he sent an email, I believe, to the employees, right? He's like, hey, now we're ready to commercialize this thing. Can you give us a little bit of background on that? Because you were there along that time period. And do you believe Elon now? And are we about to see a massive ramp on the energy side? Because I live in Austin, Texas, which you think would be an amazing epic epicenter for this stuff. And I haven't heard of one person talking about Tesla solar here. And I'm like yeah. part of the owner's club here. I'm very involved. So it's like, I don't, it doesn't like what I'm seeing in the real life doesn't connect with what Elon's talking about quite yet. Yeah. I've been following uh, Tesla energy uh, long after I got laid off. And yet yeah, definitely right now is the hardest they've ever been pushing the energy division. Uh, just the other day, they, uh, up the referral program where you can earn a power wall after 10 Tesla solar referrals. It may also include 10 uh, Tesla vehicles. I'd have to double check that. But, uh, and, you know, they increase it, the amount of money that you get for a Tesla solar referral. The cost of the panels and the modules have dropped significantly because Tesla is making their own modules in their own factory right here in the United States which is a big cost advantage because they don't have to worry about the solar tariffs from imp importing outside of the country, which that gives them a big advantage over other companies. And because the way that they're selling it and pitching it is a lot cheaper than they used to. So when I worked for Tesla, it was very expensive for them to sell Tesla uh, solar the way they were. Because if somebody um, got solar from me talking to them at a Best Buy or Home Depot, Best Buy or Home Depot, they would get a cut of that solar. So Tesla had to give them a cut. Then there was also if that person used a referral, they had, I think it was like $500 back then. So it was a little bit more money. Um, but then they also had to pay me. And then they also had to pay the energy advisor who had a commission. And then we had bonuses. Now Tesla doesn't even sometimes send people out to the house. They just look at the satellite pictures and... And sometimes they just send somebody who quickly does like a big drone view, basically. So they cut down on the cost significantly of selling it and manufacturing it, which allows them to sell it at an extremely low rate while still making a profit. Hmm. Yeah, we, Eli, on the last episode, you remember we were chatting, was it with Mark Benton? I have this, Carson, I've got this cool idea. Let me see what you think about it. I was thinking... Like for millennials, I mean, the three of us on the call are a perfect example. Like, especially if you don't have like a bunch of kids and all this and you want to live this like smart, minimal life where you're not trying to go buy a million dollar house that you're hardly using because you're at work all the time. I had this vision years ago, or this idea of creating like a Tesla, like think of RV park, but there's like uh, containers. It's, you know, Google Fiber connected each 
little there's a there's a charging station for for your car and then a common community area or you could even do what you're doing like it could just be like a parking lot for people that want to live in their teslas but a shower you got you got internet connect i mean the things that a millennial need it's really just the internet connection place to take a shower and maybe a place to go hang out i've got i, I yes. can't believe no one's done this yet Yes. There's not a lot of people who are living in their Teslas. I've only maybe five or six people. I've been tr keeping track of all the people who've been doing it. And yeah, that's a fantastic idea. It just have one place for everywhere to go, have some shade, which uh, one great thing about having shade is, you know, the Teslas will use less energy to cool themselves. So keep it more energy efficient and have solar on top of the canopies, you know, to power them. This will be especially great for cyber trucks in the future. Oh, that'd be amazing with the cyber trucks. Cyber truck, um, I actually pre-ordered myself and I may decide to upgrade into living into that. And it depends on a few factors. You were talking about it last week, Eli. It needs to have like a fold down into the cyber bed so the climate control can get back there. But another essential thing it needs, and not a lot of people brought up, needs to have speakers back there. Because what I like to do is I like to target the speakers to where my head's laying right here when I'm watching a movie or a show. So I got to have that back there. That, that would be another great thing to have. We've got to start tweeting Elon Musk about that because I've just definitely been hammering on. We've got to get it to fold down. We've got, at the very least, yes. we've got to get air to the back. Because like yes. the back may be big enough that we don't even – like the entire bed is just in the back. It seems like Cybertruck is big enough for that. But if we don't yes. get climate control in there, it no longer makes it a camping vehicle – because if I'm going out in a Tesla, I don't want to just have some bag over the top and have to deal with all the open air bullshit. Like I want to be in yeah. the comfort of the car. So I hope they get that right. And I think they will. But the speakers is one that I haven't seen anyone bring up. So we've got to smash on that uh, when he's yes. active on Twitter next time. He definitely confirmed there's going to be a fold down between the back seat and the bed. But he said maybe to a three-parter question as to whether you can crawl through it to get through the cabin and the vault. I don't want to also have to be able to get, if I'm in the driver's seat of the car, get out of the car and then crawl in through the back of the bed. I want to crawl in through the car. Like I already do with my Model X. You know, that's a big deal. Cause yeah, if I had yeah. to get out of my Model S every time I wanted to reach up to the MCU and turn yep. up the volume or change the air or whatever, I, that would be kind of annoying. So yeah, and that is a big one I really hope they do because I have an order on a Cybertruck too and that will be my camping vehicle, especially for the mountains, car camping. That's it, it's game over. 500 miles of range, like the solar uh, option on the top of the thing so you can actually fight off the uh, little bit of vampire drain, which by the way is now like lower than ever. I left my car at the airport for a week and lost like 10 miles. Couldn't believe it. Used to be yeah. like 10 miles a day. Um, and this is even just like, this happened via software updates. Like my car loses less range now per day left idle than it ever has before. So when you combine that with the solar charging on the cyber truck, I think we'll actually be gaining range. Yes. And the climate control has gotten more efficient too. I used to lose 30, 40% overnight, uh, leaving the air conditioning on. Now it's like 20, 15%. It's gotten a lot more efficient over time. I've had the same experience, 15 to 20, which was a big shock the last time yeah. I used it. It's like, which is also surprising since camper mode has enabled me to charge all my devices overnight. So it keeps the DC power ports active so I could charge up my iPhone, my iPad, my batteries. So even when charging those, it's still more efficient, which is crazy. And here's a pretty cool story about remember back in the early days when we didn't even have the ability to keep climate on before they added camper mode? So yes. the story for how we got that was um, a good friend of mine works at SpaceX and through her and some executives at SpaceX, we actually got back in, I think, 2017, late 2017, we actually got a dream case to Elon and he went and camped in it with his kids and it was after a couple of his kids and it was after that, that the keep climate on mode got added to the car just a few weeks later. Ah, Nice. I had to use a workaround, an app that would like constantly signal the car, keep climbing on, keep climbing on. It would do this like every hour or two, essentially, before that update came out. That was um, big. But yeah, we had, we had to yeah. get it to the man himself to experience. And then they've started like really baking out that feature. But yeah, that was the, that was the goal. So it, it, it worked. But yeah, it was cool. We didn't think he'd actually use it. 
Uh, we even this, did a little funny for at Christmas. I don't know if you remember Anwar Beck. We may not have been friends. Was this it. the Founders one that was red? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. Yep, we that did the bed cool. for Elon. We donated all the money to make a wish, and we donated him a bed for his car because back then he was sleeping on the factory floor still. So, yes. yeah, yeah. One thing, but yep, I can't. I'm surprised the, the couch thing. Why didn't he use the dream? Remember when people were raising money for the couch? Why didn't he just use that dream case he already had? <laughs> I don't he think just he just slept in a Tesla right outside the factory or on the factory. You could drive it right into the end of line. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't, I know that would have been perfect, right? Yeah. yeah, I have a feeling from my experience inside the factory, especially in the line Model 3, it's probably a little bit noisy, but it would have been cool if you had done that. <laughs> yeah, I had, Eli, this is the first time I'm hearing that story. So you guys made Elon scratch his own itch almost. Yes. Like, that's what I'm hearing. That's crazy, dude. I've actually never told that story, uh, and definitely not publicly. So, yep, no, it was cool, man. It, it took a while, but, like, one of his, like, VPs tested it out first, make sure it was a real deal, and then they gave it to him to try um, yeah, but he'd like, so the, the, the man himself has, uh, done the lifestyle you're living. Excellent. Carson, what else, what else in your journey, what else in your experience you, you think would be useful to people you would want people to know, or for somebody who's considering testing out this lifestyle? Cause you did it in a way. So we both know, uh, Nico Tesla van life. Yes. And from what I recall, he just kind of just decided one day to do it and just went right in, right? He just like went off this cliff and I was like, whoa, bro. Like, I don't know. It would have had to have been a lot more gradual. You kind of stepped into it. So like contrast your, your process with that with Nico because you knew Nico, right? Yes. I talked to Nico a bunch of times. Uh, coincidentally, we were planning the same exact thing at the exact same time. We were both former Tesla employees. We both got the Model X. He jumped in and he did it right away. I kind of eased myself into it. Uh, he, interestingly, he actually got a, a lemon from uh, Tesla. So he got his Tesla like really cheap. I think he got like a uh, Model X for like 40000 And for me, I actually put my entire life savings on the down payment of a lease for my Model X. And I did a lease because I didn't have a lot of credit history. And in another nine months, I actually going to be buying out the lease uh, or extending the lease with the, um, until I can uh, finance it. Otherwise, if I turn the Tesla in, I'm way over my mileage limit and I'm going to be paying a lot of over mileage fees. Oh, I know that game. My first Tesla, I did a lease. And when I did a lease transfer so I could buy my uh, Starship that's outside. Um, yeah, I had to pay the guy who took the lease a good amount of cash because I was like almost over the miles at year two out of a three year lease. Oh, wow. Yeah. What do you do now for work now that you're doing what you're doing or do you even have to? Uh, yes. Up until recently, I was working for Lyft corporate and driver support. So supporting uh, Lyft drivers, uh, running online and in-person support actually. And I was working at the New York city location, uh, handing out hand sanitizer and masks to uh, Lyft drivers. Unfortunately, I was part of another mass layoff with the company back in May. Uh, but yeah, for two years, that, that was a great experience. Ironically, a lot of people who were laid off from Tesla went over and came over to Lyft, like uh, John McNeil, who was CEO of Lyft, but was also vice president of Tesla. Uh, Cal Langton, who's VP at Lyft, and still VP at Lyft, who was a VP at Tesla, he actually introduced the large Southern Australian battery uh, with Elon Musk. Uh, so I was working with a lot of Tesla people up until recently. And now I'm hopefully uh, trying to get back with Tesla. Maybe, you know, getting laid off was a blessing in disguise. I heard back from some uh, recruiters last month from Tesla asking me to confirm, you know, where and when I work for Tesla and who I work for Tesla. Um, they followed up with me last week uh, saying, oh, I don't, that recruiter doesn't um, recruit for that position anymore. So they send my information to another recruiter. And then within five minutes, that recruiter said, oh, I don't recruit for that position. I'm forwarding your information over to another recruiter. So, you know, hopefully I hear back soon from that. I would love nothing more than to work for Tesla again. So, but in the meanwhile, I'm regional organizer for the Tesla Owners Club of New York State now. And I've been a volunteer for the Tesla Science Center for the past four years. That is awesome. So before we get back to the Tesla Science Center, because I don't know anything about that, 
are you looking at Fremont? Or are you looking at this unknown location of a new gigafactory coming soon to somewhere in the central United States? And we're back in Austin. <laughs> yeah, I see you want Austin, man. Yeah, I would love. I did uh, apply to work at the Buffalo Gigafactory two years ago. I did go up there and visit. It. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. But I saw the factory. It's beautiful up there. Uh, I would love to stay. Uh, here on Long Island, but I'm willing to relocate to, you know, where some of my family is, maybe in uh, central Florida. But uh, yeah, I'm applying to positions to be a Tesla advisor or gallery advisors at their location to be a solar roofer uh, here on Long Island or in central Florida. Uh, so I'm not necessarily looking at the Gigafactory locations right now. I'm looking to stay here on Long Island or where my family is and uh, some of my family is in central Florida. Any Tesla recruiters are watching, guys, he lives in his Tesla. He is committed. Yes. To, he's committed to this. It takes a special time. I literally time live and breathe that. Tesla. Literally. Do you guys, Carson, there's a saying, when you're making breakfast, they say the chicken is involved because it just lays an egg, but the pig is committed. There are not too many people that are that committed to this way of life, to sustainability. So that's amazing, dude. I kind of want to jump, a, I kind of want to jump a little bit into your experience with Tesla as well as Lyft. What is your, uh, what do you think of Tesla, uh, Tesla Robo Taxi and that, the future plans for that? Can you, can you comment on that? Yes. So I think Tesla has the potential to be instantly profitable in this sector. The only thing that will cost them money, essentially, for this, starting this up is legal fees, dealing with local municipalities, DMVs and such, getting it regulated. I think that will be their biggest cost. And, you know, uh, their biggest toughness in getting this started because Tesla's margins in this sector will be amazing. First off, they're going to be using their own vehicles. So they're basically just gifting themselves their own cars. Unlike Lyft and Uber, you know, they have to buy from other companies or selling them at a profit. So, of course, they have to buy at a higher price. Then the energy that these vehicles use. Tesla has its own charging infrastructure. So they're basically giving themselves their own energy, especially if the charging stations are running on solar and especially if it's running on their solar and then maintenance on the vehicles. They're not going to charge themselves extra on the maintenance of their own vehicles. They're just going to be doing maintenance on the vehicles at cost. And the maintenance will already be low because they're electric vehicles, which require a lot less maintenance. And Hardware and software, they're going to be doing it all. They're going to be completely vertically, vertically integrated in this product. So they, and there's already hundreds of thousands of cars that have the ability to be just flip the switch and they'll mm -hmm. already be out there. It took years and years for Lyft and Uber to build up a fleet of hundreds of thousands of cars. Where Tesla, they can just flip a switch and they already have a matching fleet. Would you urge Tesla to go ahead and start the fleet driving service uh, with just like like with people like you like or us like regular drivers before full autonomy is ready yes i definitely would with human drivers because that would allow them to build out the software uh have it as a backup um they should also have a remote human drivers so like if uh you know tesla runs into a problem that it can't deal with somebody can just beam in remotely uh, over 4G or hopefully 5G in the future and just manually take over for a few minutes as well. I was thinking strictly from a, a marketing standpoint, imagine if you just flip the switch and the three of us, I mean, I know we would do this tomorrow. I would become a Tesla Uber driver. Yep. And all of a sudden, all these people, I mean, a lot of the, the way you sell the vehicles is the vehicle sell themselves. And it's not just looking at it. It's riding in it. So I feel like if not for anything else, but the marketing side to really push vehicle sales, are the, what is it? A million Teslas are out there now cumulatively over a million. I, I, I yeah. feel like 25, 30% of us would probably go out there just for the mission. It's not even about the money part of it. I mean, our friend Safian from the third row, like that's how he kind of made his name in the beginning in the Tesla community is he was, he's like a software engineer. And he was Ubering in his performance Model S and all this stuff just to share that experience with people. I think that by itself would be an amazing thing. Yes, that would definitely sell more Teslas. More people getting in the cars, riding in them. 
mouth, word of mouth will spread like wildfire. If they started the program today. I think that's a big demand lever that Tesla for some reason hasn't yet leveraged, which I'm, I'm hoping they do by the end of 2020. I think that'd be fantastic. But I mean, they talk about scheduling all these ride and drive events. Imagine if all of a sudden overnight you had 300,000 drive events happening every day and it's being done by owners who are getting paid by real people to experience that. I would do it. I mean, I won't do it a lot because I have white seats, beautiful cars, my baby, and mm -hmm. there's only a limit of how much I'm going to trust people to mess that up. But I will definitely go out and do some, some Tesla, some Tesla rideshare drives just to share it with some people. And it'll make some amazing videos when some of these unsuspecting people find out what a cheetah mode launch looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and then the best car is to do it in uh, for the drivers, especially because their margins on, on it as well are great because all the money that they're making, they're not putting back into the car with gas and maintenance and other fees. So they're a lot more profitable when they're driving for these platforms as well. My guess is when this, when this first comes out that initially it'll even it, one, you'll be able to charge it a premium because on a, like every Tesla is a premium car. There's, I mean, there, I know there's a handful of people that may have basic seats and stuff like that, but for the most part, based on the Tesla sales data, the average sale price of the model three is like 55,000. Everyone's getting premium interior, the he heavily on the long range car. The, you know, this is, a, this is a luxury car, so your price point's already higher. And then when you add this guaranteed of what you're getting, I think that we'll both be able to see even more premium rates be charged with higher margins on both sides. Um, I'm telling you, when that I can't wait for this to come out because I, I'll be honest, and this is like elitist as hell, but like I hate being in anything that's not a Tesla. Like I really do all of it. Like the yep. engine noise, like when I get into a car and there's like 12,000 buttons, like I immediately, my brain hey. is like, stop, it hurts. Like, I don't care any of the Teslas. I don't care. It could be a 2012 first Tesla I've ever made 300,000 miles. I don't care. I would, I'm so much more comfortable being in that ecosystem, any of the four cars, because Roadster is realistically every part of this. I'm so much more comfortable. In fact, when I travel places, if there's a local Tesla rideshare service, like or shuttle service, if they hit me up on Instagram, I'm immediately, I'm in. Here's what time I'm there. I'll pay you guys. doesn't matter because it's such a better experience than just some random car where you don't even know what you're going to get. It is, yeah. And while there is a mode on Uber and Lyft that's called like green mode or, you know, clean car mode, it's uh, where you can request, you know, a fuel efficient vehicle. You know, it also includes hybrids and other electric cars, so you're not guaranteed to get uh, a Tesla. And it's only in a few, you know, cities like Seattle and Portland and such. So, yeah, there definitely needs to be a Tesla network to address that. Another interesting thing, though, is that the Model S and Model Xs still don't come with interior cameras. So when the RoboTaxi platform launches, I'm thinking Tesla might do an interior dash cam retrofit, kind of like they do that, uh, that motion sensor retrofit that device. they already do for the S and Xs. I've got two interesting questions that I'm, I've been thinking about. Like, If I could just ask somebody who's experiencing what you're experiencing, Carson, Number one, what are some like pitfalls and things that people wouldn't think about that like l that living in your Tesla implies? Number one, question number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, if Elon Musk was on this podcast right now and you could have three wishes of improvements you could make to your Model X in order to better your living in Tesla lifestyle, what would those be? Yes. Yeah, so the number one question I get asked by people is, you know, uh, is hygiene. So, you know, like I said, I take hygiene very seriously. So wherever I stay, I always have access to a bathroom. Uh, most of the places I have 24 seven bathroom access. Uh, there's a shower at the charging station I'm currently at when I'm at my friend or family member's house, there's a shower there. Having a 24 seven gym membership or just any gym membership. Fortunately, the gyms are closed in New York right now, of course, but uh, a lot of gyms have showers. So I keep myself, you know, clean and you know smelling fresh and you know not smelling like a homeless hobo that's very important uh, but as a back of a backup of course uh, baby wipes is very important uh, when I was on the field during some training exercises in the army uh, that was the only thing that we had so baby wipes are just as good you know they're pretty much like you know wet soap towels that you rub all over yourself and I put deodorant on and, and I got dry shampoo that's another thing a lot of people don't think of don't keep propane products in your car. So like a propane-based uh, shampoo or pro 
octane-based uh, sunscreen. Uh, even though Teslas have overheat protection, the car won't go over like 105 or 106 degrees. I like just in case 115 degrees, it's kind of close. Those things can explode in your car. So that's one thing that some people uh, don't think of. And then as for what I would wish from Elon, one of the biggest things he already addressed was camper mode. Uh, for the first year I was living out of my Tesla, uh, it's kind of difficult. Yeah. Uh, I had to use an app that constantly kept the climate on, on the car. I couldn't charge up my, uh, my phone and my iPad directly from the USB ports. Uh, I had to use a massive battery. Uh, but one thing I, I that would love to have is built in AC port. Um, so I can, play my Xbox a lot easier. I do have an Xbox in my Tesla Model X, of course. I got a big battery that I plug the AC port in, and it gets me about four or five hours of play time on that, which is pretty cool. Hey, and then- For you on that, have you ever considered using one of the uh, converters? You can plug in, so they actually make, you just plug it into like the cigarette lighter thing, the 12 volt, and you convert right to the regular plug AC power. So I sort of do that. I use that to charge the battery in which the Xbox is plugged into. Got it. There so, we go. But, so it's charging the battery while the Xbox is plugged into that battery. So while it's charging that battery and the Xbox is being powered by that battery, I still only get about four hours. The Tesla doesn't, with the inverters that I found, it just doesn't output enough power to power the Xbox directly when got it's plugged it. in. So it's got to be powered by a massive battery. At the, uh, at the same time. And then the third thing I would love to see in my Tesla is active tint. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but uh, basically it's like an electronic tint. You, you flip a switch, tint goes on on the car. You flip another switch, tint goes off. Right now I'm currently using sun, like snap-in sunshades, which are pretty nice, but I think uh, having active tint would be so much cooler. That is the G move right there. Cause so what I did is I limoed out my back windows, uh, the back seat windows and the back windshield, but the front seats and the windshield, you can't tint at all in California. So same yep. thing. I have to put, I have to like drag out this car cover thing and then like stick things up there because I don't, people don't need to see what's going on in the back of my Tesla. I'm not always alone. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, that would be an excellent feature. And it just feels weird as hell when you're like, you know, you're going, setting it all up there. It's like nothing to see here, guys. <laughs> Don't yep. act like you're not impressed. <laughs> 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 Active tip would be amazing. So what do you think? About a year or so ago, there was a patent that Tesla submitted that pretty clearly sounded like a new type of glass. Whether or not they're going to produce it, we don't know. But it sounds like it was going to address this problem. Okay. No, I didn't hear about that one. Uh, the one I heard about recently was the lasers to clean the windshield on the Roadster. That was the interesting one that I heard about recently. But no, I didn't hear about it. He, he, some type of new glass that'll be bulletproof and tinted? So it was before Cybertruck, so I don't know if it'd be okay. bulletproof, but it was something that included like light emitting diodes into the glass. Ooh. That's yeah. not like, yeah, it, it, I, I didn't, it didn't make, it didn't make a lot of splash in the news, but I, I, Eli, I definitely read some articles about that as well. Which sounded like it could have the ability of both active tint and possibly even image projection on the inside, right? Like in that head into a world of future autonomy. But again, it was just a patent filing. A lot of things get filed. But when I first saw it, I was like, man, if anything happens with this, this sounds really cool. Interesting. Does it have anything to do with the solar glass as well to like, the reflectivity because you know i remember he's talking about the solar glass saying it's really hard to make it uh you know not look like solar when you're looking at it from the ground up at the roof like that's something i was really concentrating so like they've been look working a lot that's one of the big delays about the solar roof he wanted to look good from the ground essentially I do remember him talking about that. Not sure if it's related. Now after this, now after this episode, I want to go back and check out that patent again. But uh, Carson, man, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us on the Tesla Geek Show. So awesome what you're doing, man. Living out of your Tesla the way you do inspires me to do that even more. So in the next few weeks, when you see a series of me looking like a hobo in my car, you know you're to blame <laughs> for that. 
And to the Tesla Geek Show audience, guys, just want to say thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode of the Tesla Geek Show. Don't panic. <laughs> <laughs>